Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Solar Ranking Cycle webinar. I'm Rahul Patel, Simulation Design Engineer at Flonex. Today I'll be taking you through the methodology for Solar Ranking Cycle Design through Simulations. So we'll just go through the agenda really quick. So we just have uh, three things in the agenda. I'll just give a quick overview on what is Flonex. Then we move to the Solar Ranking Cycle on what is a Solar Ranking Cycle how we're going to simulate it in Flonex and what inputs we'll require in order to simulate the solar ranking cycle in Flonex. Then we'll just have a quick summary on how to simulate the system in Flonex, what is a solar ranking cycle, just a summary on the webinar. To begin with, we'll just move to an introduction to Flonex. So Flonex is an engineering tool that uses to solve fundamental physics of flow and heat transfer of components in large thermal fluid networks. It is also a 1D approach so it can solve problems really quick and efficiently. At the same time, Flonex is also a system level software. It contains a large library of components that are commonly used in the industry. We also have advanced fluid models present in Flonex, such as two-phase fluids, mixtures of mixtures, solids, the combustion library from NASA CAE. We, also, we can also model slurry. And uh, we also do steady state and transit simulations in Flonex. We also have the control library uh, that contains the analog and digital control systems. And we also integrate with third party software such as ENSYS, MATLAB, uh, EASE, Excel, and etc. Then, if we talk about software quality, Flonix is developed within an NQA1 and ISO 9001 environment. This ensures that we provide the best standards of quality compliances. We also test our releases with the nuclear verification and validation. And uh, with the software services that we provide, we provide a user-friendly interface. We also have a help manual that can be accessed through F1, and it can give a detailed information on how to use a component, what is that component used for. It can also give you information on what inputs you need to specify and what results you can expect for a component. And we also have a dedicated user support. So if you're struggling with uh, simulating a network or a system, you can just contact us and we have a, a dedicated user support that can just get back to you and help you out to simulate the system that you're looking for. Moving to the solar ranking cycle, there's just a quick overview on uh, what is a solar ranking cycle. So we have a solar collector field in the solar ranking cycle. So the, what, the purpose of the solar collector field, it collects the energy, uh, the solar energy and transfers it to a fluid the working fluid in the molten salt side. Then we have a storage system for the molten salt. We'll have the hot side and the cold side. Then lastly, we'll have the ranking cycle that will be in place where the molten salt will be used to heat up the working fluid in the ranking cycle. In this case, it will be water. And that will be used to produce power. So this will just give you, as I mentioned earlier on a solar ranking cycle, it uses the sun's thermal energy to heat up a fluid by means of a solar collector, as I showed you in the picture. Then the intermediate fluid is passed through a steam generator to heat up the working fluid of the ranking cycle. So when simulating the network, uh, we'll just simulate the network into two subsystems. We'll have the molten salt system, then we'll have the ranking cycle system. The molten salt is circulated through the solar collector cycle and stored in two separate tanks. It will be the cold tank and the hot tank. So the cold tank stores the molten salt and it passes through the heat exchanger. So we'll have it cool down once the heat is exchanged. It will be stored in the cold tank. Then the hot tank will store the molten salt that is heated up by the solar collectors. Then the solar collector is modeled using compound component in Flonex. It uses the following components in Flonex. We'll use a pipe to simulate the flow of the molten salt in the solar collectors. Then we'll use a composite heat transfer that will be used to model the heat transfer from the solar flux to the fluid. A valve that will control the fluid flow based on the outlet temperature. The valve opening will decrease when the heat from the solar flux decreases and vice versa. I'll just dive into it more just in a minute. Then we also use a script that will be used to calculate the conduction area and the heat generated by the solar flux. Then we also have a table lookup transfer that will transfer the solar flux profile to the script. So it's just a simple table which will have the solar profile in it and it's going to transfer the solar profile to the script that is going to be used to calculate the total heat that can be added to the fluid. And then we have a velocity PID controller. We're going to use that to control the valve opening in order to maintain the outlet temperature of the molten salt. 
so as I mentioned earlier on on the previous slide where we have the valve and the valve opening will decrease when the heat from the solar flux decreases so this will allow that there shouldn't be any solidification in the pipeline of the molten salt and the solar collector script in the compound component uses the solar collector's length and width that will be used to calculate the heat transfer area and which is used to calculate the heat exerted on the panels. This heat is transferred through the inlet node of the CHT and the heat transfer area is transferred to the CHT via data transfer links in Flonix. So this was just a quick overview on uh, what is a solar ranking cycle and how we're going to set it up in Flonix. Uh, I'll just show you a simple calculation that I have set up in, in Excel and we'll focus on how the calculations were used to simulate the system in Flonix. So this is a very simple calculation set up in Excel where we have the solar profile, solar flux profile and we have the demand profile. Then these profiles were just obtained from the internet. Over here I have just done some simple calculations where I have calculated some inputs that we're going to need in Flonix. So to begin with, I have the total specific solar energy. So this was just the sum of all the solar flux and divided by 1E6 in order to have it in megawatts, from watts to megawatts. Then we calculate the total solar area. To do that, we just took the total energy demand, which I'll just show you how did I calculate that. It's just the addition of all the energy that we require. Then we just divide it by the total specific solar energy that we calculated. Then we'll just have an efficiency factor just to play it, uh, just to make it a bit realistic. At the same time, we just have the solar collector length and uh, solar collector width. It's based on the manufacturer as well. Then using the solar collector area, we can also cal calculate how many solar collectors we'll need in order to meet the energy demand requirement that we have in our system. So this is just the peak power demand that we need based on the calculations that we have over here. Then we also have some molten salt properties. We have the specific heat, the density of the molten salt. Then this is the usable salt fraction. It means how much salt can we use uh, in the system. Then this is also how much required salt we'll need based on uh, simple calculations that I did over here. I'll I'll just dive into the calculations as we go on. So it's just the total night uh, energy storage that we need because as we can see, oh, during the daytime, the solar flux, uh, the energy that will be uh, provided from the solar flux will be more than the energy that we ne need. So, but at the night, we'll see that the curve for the, the solar flux curve is below the demand graph. So we have to simulate the system to ensure that we have enough energy at nighttime in order to have enough heat transfer to the ranking cycle. So based on that, we, we use the total night time energy storage requirement. Then for that, we'll just calculate how much, energy, uh, how much power we're going to be producing at night. Then we're just going to do a simple calculation. It's just a unit conversion. Then we have the specific heat and we just uh, take the differences between the hot tank temperature and the cold tank temperature and we also use the salt, uh, usable salt fraction for that. Then these are just some energy storage requirements. How much, how big our tank is going to be, what's the volume of the tank, what diameter we're looking at and what temperatures we'll be looking at. So in our case, our hot tank temperature will be 590 and our cold tank temperature will be 350. So this is the range that we can use for the specific salt that we'll be using. So we're using a solar salt then those are the properties that uh, we have for the solar salt. Then uh, using this uh, information, we can simulate a system in Flonix. So over here, I have set up the cy cycle separately. So I have the ranking cycle as my subsystem and I have the molten salt cycle as my other subsystem. So I've just used the generic components in Flonix to set up my compound components for the turbine just to make it simple for me because it just requires some simple inputs so I have modeled the ranking cycle we have a turbine we have the condenser then we'll have a pump this will just simulate the pressure drop in the system then this node will simulate the sim uh, steam generator that we will be uh, replacing it from a node to an actual steam generator then we just have a temperature boundary condition on this node 
So the reason why we have a temperature bundle condition, it's going to give us the heat input that we need. In our case, it's going to be the heat energy source. It means how much energy we will require in order to heat up the water to become steam at 500 degrees Celsius or to meet the conditions that we specified. Then I have already uh, designed the system where I have changed, I have used the designer setup in Flonex in order to design the system. As you can see, if you go back to my Excel, we have a maximum power output, uh, maximum demand of 90 megawatts. So we need to design our turbine in order for it to withstand uh, or produce the 90 megawatts of power that we're looking for. So over here, I just told Flonex, change vary the mass flow rate in the pump in order to obtain the 90 megawatts that we're looking for. And uh, it has given me 78.8778 or 79. Then we also know that we need 242 megawatts of energy from the molten salt. Then what I also did, I took the design components from the steam cycle. I just double clicked on every component and uh, this components were already designed uh, by, by the scripts and by the cycle itself. So I don't have to redesign them. So I can just copy them from the compound component and create a cycle using that. So this side we will represent it as the ranking cycle. Then this side will present it as a molten salt cycle. So firstly, we're just going to work with the bundle conditions and in the steam generator from the molten salt side before we can even um, model it fully. So over here, I just modeled the steam generator using simple components in Flonex, just two pipes and a CHT. So one side will be having the molten salt flowing and the other side will have the water flowing and the CHT will just uh, do the heat transfer between the two fluids. So already this side has been designed. We had to design the molten salt side. So how I designed the molten salt side is I varied the mass flow rate of the molten salt in order to obtain the temperature that we're looking for for the cold tank storage. And I have changed the length of the, of the steam generator in order to obtain the 500 degrees Celsius. And to do that, I did the same thing. I took the designer. Then I just told the designer that this is the temperatures I'm looking for. And this is what you need to vary. So it has varied the mass flow rate and the length of the steam generator and I have obtained the required temperatures that I'm looking at. Then this is how I modeled the steam generator in Flonex. Then I had to replace the, the molten salt side, the boundary condition and replace it into proper components. So I just removed the boundary conditions now and this is how I modeled the molten salt side. This over here, we, ha we have it as our solar collector, as I specified in the presentation and I mentioned how the solar collector was modeled as well. Then over here, we just have a pump that pumps the fluid through the solar collectors. Then we have another pump over here that pumps fluid from the hot tank to the steam generator. So it's a closed loop for both of them. And I have just tried to simulate the system as well. So when I was doing the molten salt side, in order for me to obtain 590 over here, I have changed the mass flow rate of the pump for the cold storage tank. So it's also based on how much flow you pass through the solar collector in order to obtain the outlet temperature. At the same time, I also modeled the, I also designed the basic thermal pump for the hot storage tank because how much fluid is going to be pumped or we already did it over here. So we already know this is the mass flow rate we're looking for. We designed it. You're just going to use that and put it here. Then we just designed for this pump. So we have three pumps in the system and all those three pumps were designed for the specific conditions that we're looking at and uh, our steady state system solves. Moving to the transient simulation, I just added a controller for the valve. It's going to control the valve opening, as I mentioned, the velocity PID in order to obtain the outlet temperature that we're looking for. And I'm just going to solve steady state for now. It's a quite big system and there's a lot of uh, project calculations that needs to be done. So it takes a bit while, but once it's, it converges, it's easy for us to work from there. So it's easy to start it from steady state simulations. I'll just deactivate some of the drawing sheets in order for us to obtain the steady state simulation first. It's much easier when most of the drawing sheets are disabled. So I'll just save my gas values. I'll just save a snare for the gas values.
then I just told Flonix in the flow solver that use the gas values so you can initialize your steady state from a snap and it's going to initialize it from the gas values that I just saved now so now it shouldn't take long you can you'll notice that the the simulation is just 17 iterations then we are just moving to transient so I will disable all the drawing sheets and I'm just going to enable the transient sheet so you'll notice that as I run the transient simulation you'll notice that as the temperature starts to decrease the valve is start to close so currently our valve is sitting at 0 0.01 0 0.001 as our output that's where the velocity PID controller is controlling it to and we have the solar flux profile as I mentioned in our Excel where we have our solar profile that I have put it in Flonex you will start to notice that as the solar profile increases the temperature starts to increase as well but the current to, but the valve will currently still be at 0 0.1 since well the temperature is still very low so once the temperature starts to increase you will see that this valve starts to open as well over you will start noticing the valve is opening and as you see the temperature has reached, reached the limit of 590 the valve will start to close as well so this is how you will be modeling a solar ranking cycle in Flonex and you can see that uh, as the uh, you can do control systems with the valves and control the valve opening in order to maintain a certain temperature at the outlet so we can have other control systems in place where we can also control the pump on the ranking cycle side the, sp the mass flow rate through the pump in order to meet the power requirement that we're looking for so currently we just have it at 90 megawatts but if we have a varying power demand for example we need just a certain amount of power we don't need 90 megawatts every time we will need 80 then we can also put a control system to control the mass flow rate through the pump in order to obtain the power output that we're looking for. We can also have another control system for this pump as well. So the, the flow rate through this pump will control the temperature that's going to be entering the turbine as well. So we can control the flow rate in this pump in order to obtain the temperature that we're looking for. So over here you can see that I have simulated for 24 hours. We are just close to finishing it. So you can see that as the, the green line represents the solar flux, I'll just try to zoom in the graph so it's easy for us to focus. So the green line represents the solar flux, whereas the red line represents the temperature and the blue line represents the valve opening. So you can notice that as the temperature starts to increase, because we set the point to 590, so if it goes above 590, you will see that the valve starts to close then once it drops below 590 the valve starts to open again so moving back to the presentation to our final slides to conclude our webinar uh, Flonex is a tool that engineers can use for various other purposes for example design analysis optimization control systems or even to evaluate complex thermal fluid systems then you can also use Flonex to provide a way of tracking parameters during real-time simulations for example, as I showed you, you can track how the temperature will change based on the valve opening. So you can also visualize that in real time simulations. Then Flonix is also a um, software that can help to fast track the design process. It can save time and money, both uh, engineering time and money, because now it's easy because now you don't have to go through experimental uh, data and all those things. You can use Flonix to do that for you. And if you would like to request a demo, you can just uh, go to our Flonex website at contact us and just request the demo, drop an email and we'll get back to you on that. Or you can also reach out to us to inquire at flonex.com and we can move from there. This will conclude the webinar.